Have you ever wondered why anemones are sticky? Is it their slime coat? Are they somehow grabbing us or their food with their tentacles? Maybe something else is going on? Well, the answer is simple. But there's a lot more to anemones and their venom than you might think. Hi, I'm Reef Men, and this is a quick video all about sea anemones, their venom, and what makes them sticky to the touch. And, of course, this wouldn't be YouTube without me saying it, so take a moment and click the subscribe button if you haven't done that already. So why are anemones sticky? The answer is microscopic cells that cover the surface of their tentacles called nematocytes. These cells have an organelle inside them from which the whole phylum that coral belongs to gets its name, the nida. As you may be aware, all corals, anemones, jellyfish, hydra, all these animals belong to the phylum Cnidaria. Now, every animal in the Cnidaria phylum has those organelles inside their cells, and that, of course, includes sea anemones. The nida produces a structure called a nematocyst, and that's what's responsible for both the sticky feeling and the incredible pain that some of them can inflict upon us. When you touch an anemone or a coral, millions of these tiny harpoons fire out and lodge themselves into your skin and they deliver a tiny little dose of venom. That's the stickiness you feel, and that's the cause of the pain or welts that you also might feel as that venom takes effect. Sea anemones, of course, you know, we keep them in reef tanks around the world, and millions more people interact with them in tide pools on the world's coastlines. Generally, nothing too unpleasant happens when you get envenomated by one. But, of course, there are exceptions to this. Even some anemones that we keep in our home aquariums can produce dangerous reactions if you were to get exposed to enough of the venom, particularly the Haddon's carpet anemone and the various condylactus species that some folks also keep in their tanks. Some other anemone species are not kept in home aquariums very often, and for good reason. With names like the Night Sea Anemone or the Hell's Fire Sea Anemone, you can imagine what it might feel like to work with these in your home aquarium. There's actually even one report of acute kidney failure happening after being stung by an unnamed anemone. So, you know, these are not things that you generally want to mess with. Some of them, like the Haddon's carpet anemone, and even those tiny little mini carpet anemones that we have, are, you know, they're closely related, um, they might not cause an outright pain when you touch it, but over time and exposure again and again, your body can develop an allergic reaction to the venom, and eventually that could be a problem for you. There's quite a bit of research going on about uh, sea anemone venom, and it actually turns out that they contain a huge variety of active compounds that interact with other living things, like ourselves, in interesting ways. The mini carpet anemone that I mentioned, for instance, it has venom that can block the KV1 potassium channel, and that's something that's involved in the repolarization of muscle fibers and tissues in your body. So, you know, long story short, if those pretty little mini maxi anemones could get enough of their venom into you, you might have a heart attack or, you know, your heart might be paralyzed or maybe your diaphragm will be paralyzed and it'll be impossible for you to breathe. You know, stuff like that happens if you block your potassium channels and that's not fun. Other anemones produce interesting venom as well. Heteractus species, they make a venom that is actually being considered for use as an insecticide. It's actually particularly effective against insect and arachnid sodium channels. And, you know, while insects and spiders don't come into contact with heteractus anemones in the wild, it's still really an interesting thing that the venom can be used in those ways. In humans, for example, venom from the giant sun anemone is being studied to treat autoimmune diseases because it blocks other channels that are involved in those diseases. While all anemones contain nematocysts, and all nematocysts fire those toxic little harpoons when you trigger them, most of those are not strong enough to break through the barrier of your skin. And so most of them will just feel a little sticky, and we don't immediately keel over in pain when we contact them. Species like the bubble tip anemone, and even those mini carpet anemones that I mentioned earlier, they're very unlikely to cause any harm to you because they're just not strong enough to get past your skin, so there's no need to worry about keeping them in your home aquarium. Others like the Haddon's carpet anemone or even the condylactus, they can cause welts and pain, but you have to be a little bit sensitive or allergic to it for it to really be a problem. So just watch out for it over time if you have one of those in your tank. I know this was a quick video and I know we covered a lot of information, 
But I think it's an interesting source just sort of to seed your mind for future investigation if you're interested. You know, hopefully I triggered some thoughts for you. Uh, so go and do some reading. Google is out there. And if you're interested, there's all sorts of papers in journals like toxins. Um, you can just search on Google Scholar about sea anemone venom and you're gonna find it. And they quickly go above my understanding. Uh, it's very complicated sort of chemistry stuff, um, but it's interesting science nonetheless. And I encourage you to check it out if you're into that kind of stuff. I also really wanted to thank the folks at Age of Aquariums in Signal Hill for letting me film their anemone tank for this video. So check them out if you're ever in the Los Angeles or Long Beach area, or if you're not, you can just check their website out. It's ageofaquariums.biz. And so, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you next time. Bye.